Yo, JD here, Terra Lewis, and as you can see, we're going to be talking about the setups here today, and we're just going to go through each component, each aspect of the setup, and just explain in as much detail as possible, just to help the guys, or you guys, who maybe not, well, might not have a complete understanding of what each component actually does, and then once you do get a better understanding, you can actually tailor your own setups to your own driving style, to hopefully improve your lap times at the game and I'll just be going through as I said explaining in as much detail of what everything should be doing please note that even though although one component should be doing something it actually may react differently to what it should be in real life so please please be aware that this is not a sim racing game <laughs> so the components in here should well they might not be reacting on what it should be doing in real life how a real f1 car should be set up because I am no expert, I'm no mechanic or anything like that. I'm just going to tell you what, what works for me and my advice on what actually set up the cars for time trial, race, in the wet and stuff like that. So let's jump into it now. And by the way, default setup, if you are struggling, is a very, very good setup to actually start off with. The stock setup will give you plenty of lap time. It'll probably be only about half a second off the potential of what you can do but you can see we've got all these things here we'll go run through this and just explain each one each one every single one and of what it should be doing how it should really change the behavior of the car and uh, my own advice of what i think you should be doing depending on your controller your input device being the yeah the pad or the wheel and just in the race scenario so if you're doing a one lap or qualifying in the race stuff like that so Let's start off with the wings, the aerodynamics, and as you can see, it goes from 1 to 11, which has been the case on pretty much every F1 game. For most of the times around here, on this game in particular, myself, I like to run the wings the same. Um, so 6-6, six, six, I would only really go a high front wing for like a time trial or something like that. And if you go higher on the wing, so if you go say like 11-6, You'll go have a lot more, um, lot more turning at the rear, well, at the front, than what you would do. So it'd be a lot more responsive, a lot more pointy to car. So you'd be able to actually really attack the corners a lot more. So it'd be a, a lot less understeer, it'd be a least amount of understeer as possible if you went all the way to the right on the wings. However, if you do do that and you run like a eleven four or something, it's going to be quite a big misbalance between the cars. So. You go lose some straight line speed from this as well. So the more you put this up, the more the drag profile of the car, um, you're actually going to lose straight line speed regardless if it's going to be the rear or front wing. So if you did this, this would be the maximum downforce you could possibly run. Um, but if you go down the other end, so if you ran 1-1, one, one, then this is going to be the least amount of downforce possible, um, the least amount of weight on the actual aerodynamics. So you're going to have a lot more straight line speed. So if you ran like 1.4 or something like that, um, compared to that 6.6 or 1.6, you're going to have a lot more straight line speed. And um, since the rear is actually high, if the rear is always higher than the front, then you're going to have um, quite a bit of stability, but it would just be a lot more understeery. So my advice for this game is really, in the race particular, so if I'm doing AOR 50% in particular or something like that, I'd probably always keep the wings the same, maybe even go down on the front wing a little bit, um, which will be a connection to the ballast, which I'll be talking about, or the weight distribution towards the end of the setup. So I'd probably run like 4.6 maybe, or 5.6 or 6.6. In the race, I'd very rarely go one above um, the rear wing, because if you do do that in this game, the front's going to turn in quicker, but it's just going to cause more oversteer. So if the front is higher than the rear, the more clicks you do to the right, um, the more downforce you'll get, but the more oversteer you're going to get and uh, a less straight line speed. So hopefully you have understood that. So more to the right, more downforce, so a straight line speed. If the front wing is higher than the rear, and the more higher it is, so the more clicks to the right is than to the rear, um, the more oversteer you're going to generate. This would be a really, really pointy setup, but you would probably actually spin out. Whereas if you put it closer together, the more stable it's going to get with a reduced straight line speed, but you're going to have reduced uh, downforce as well. So, around some tracks, I'll probably run at like 4.6, but most of the time I run like 6.6, 5.5, 4.4, six, five, five, four, four, maybe 3.3 three, three on some tracks, but that's probably 
as low as I'd go really and as high as I'd go around Monaco I'd probably run like maybe 11.10 or maybe like 10.9 or something like that for time trial but it may be in the race I'd probably run at 10.10 or even 11.11 so that's my advice to the wings hopefully that has made sense but any questions then please feel free to ask for the transmission this is where it can get a little bit confusing sometimes and um, my, my friends here at Martin and Jack575 um, we've all, we've all had a quite a bit of a discussion about this. They've given me some great advice about this in the past and made me really understand this. Um, so I'll put their Twitter links in, in the bio below. But for this, the transmission on, if I just go on that screen now. So basically, the more you go to the rights and the more lock setup you have, the better potential traction that you can get. However, um, the, ba the downside of this, the better potential traction, so the more instant traction that you get. So compared to say if you left it at 75 and you went up to 80 the traction would come more instant through the wheels so when you're actually on the throttle um but it'd be more difficult to control because it's actually coming faster through the wheel so if you're going through that twisty section where you've got a lot of steering lock on the track um and you had a high so more of a locked differential on the better traction the better potential that you can get but it's just going to be a lot harder to control so that's why you see most of my videos, I'm around 50, 70, because 50, it gives you the least potential in gaining lap time, but it's the easiest to control. So I would recommend running a more unlocked differential on, especially when you're doing like a race, a league race, in the wet, it's the best thing to run, because the traction is not so instant, you could be so much more progressive when you're actually on the traction, and it's just a lot easier to control as well. So. For one lap pace, a TT time trial, even though I don't do it, it would be high. It would be probably more beneficial. The better potential there is for more of a lock setup and more to the right, so the more instant traction there is, but it's just more difficult to control. Um, so I say it's probably better for one lap pace, so like 80, 70, or you know 80, 60 or something like that. Probably be really good for one lap pace, but in the race when your tires go off and when you've got corners that are you know you're constantly using steering lock it's going to be very very difficult to control the car it would be beneficial on corners like such as hairpin so like basically like the china end of that long straight where you stop starting so if you're accelerating in a straight line you go gain time from the throttle or the on throttle being more locked so more to the right because you get a more instant delivery of traction but it would, I, I would suggest maybe not going as high as that maybe go that 75 or maybe 80 for that but for me personally i just find over a long race distance even though you may be losing some actual the potential lap theoretical lap time you could be so much more consistent which will actually result in you being quicker uh, throughout a whole race so hopefully that has made a little bit of sense as for the off throttle this is something i found difficult to actually <laughs> get my head around but i feel if i'm actually playing with the setups and stuff as well and just testing it myself um, I feel I've got a quite a good understanding of this now, so hopefully I could pass this on to you. So basically, if you run more to the right, more of a lock setup, it's going to cause the rears to lock up a, quite a bit more. And it's going to be more consistent, but I found once you're off the throttle, so once you're actually under braking, going off the throttle, um, it's going to cause a lot more understeer. Um, so it's just more consistent, more stable if you go to the right. Um, so more of a locked, but it will just be just a lot more understeer. So basically, it's kind of like the reverse of this. So more to the right, it's going to be easier to use, um, but the potential raw lap time you could get from that one lap pace, and that is going, is going to be significantly reduced. So if you put more to the left, so more of an unlocked kind of setup, it basically means that more than one wheel can rotate faster in relation to another. So best, basically what it means it would be better rotation for the wheels, but it'd be a looser rear end and it would just be easier for the car to step out. So that's why I always leave it not completely in the middle of this, so like 75. I leave, I leave it on 70 because it'll just give me more potential, but it'll still enable me to just control the car as well. Whereas on the on throttle, I leave it at 50 because it's just always so easy to just pick up on the throttle. So it's basically like using traction control all the time. And even though the potential may not be there, I just feel consistently over a race, um, it would just be a lot more beneficial to me, which is why my setups and time trial 
are, are not always the best for just actual one that pace. But when I race people online on this game, if fire that races that 25, 50%, you can see it works incredibly well, which is why I think this kind of setup will be pretty much the king in actual like online races, pretty much so. Move on to this now, and this is something I have been using for quite a few years now, and um, I've been using this at 2012, 2013. On this game, um, I normally run this. I find these in the middle, so the camera and the front toe, I find it's not really beneficial to really play around with this as much because I just find it just gives you the best of both worlds. It gives you stability, but also responsiveness as well. But I'll still run through this, basically what it would do. So. 2013 we used to run this and what this does is the front camber basically the more you put it to the left of so the front and rear camber that will just give you the maximum response in this so basically what happens is if you put it more to the right or so, okay in this case if you put it all the way to the left um, basically in a straight line there'll be less contact there'll be less of the tire contact or surface area of the tire being in contact with a track when you're in a straight line. But when you're actually turning into the corner, as the car actually leans, as it actually rolls the car, if that makes sense, more of the tire will be in contact with the track. So when it's actually going through a fast corner, if you run all the way to the left from the camber, so as negative as possible, when the car is actually leaning into the corner, more contact or more of the tire will be in contact with the track which will give you better grip which will give you better well not necessarily better grip but it'll just give you better responsiveness when you're actually going through the corner but it means in a straight line you'll have less contact or less tire surface and contact with the track so it'll actually give you worse traction so that's what that does and it's pretty similar for the toe as well if you go all the way to the right, it will give you the best best responsiveness possible, but it should give you the least stability possible as well. So this is going to be the best for like time trial. What well, it was in 2013 in this game, it doesn't seem to be the case because in this game, I find running this kind of setup really just unsettles the car so much. It, it's just not beneficial. So it's always best to run it to get both best of both worlds for this and for the rear toe. Put it more towards the left because that will actually give you better stability. So you want the rear to be more under control. So I want the front toe to be a little bit more responsive. So it gives me a little bit you know, better handling, but also keeping the rear under control. So basically all the way to the left, better responsiveness, um, more tire um, contact when you actually lean into the corners, which will give you a better, you know, actual better turning. But since it's going to be less when you're in a straight line, the traction is not going to be as good. So hopefully that has made sense. So basically... If we ran this, technically, this should give you the best traction and best stability. But on this game, I found that this in the middle really seems to be the best for me. So I hope that that's explained it pretty well. And we'll move on to, to there, the suspension, if I could talk properly. So for this one here, front suspension, I never really go above seven. Because I find this is a sweet spot. I could potentially do that when I actually do my updated time trials, so like in a few months time, where I actually really try and attack the track, because at the moment I'm just trying to do a brief set video for you guys, I'm not really going too hard on the tracks, um, and also just trying to give you just a best balance overall set, but for this front suspension, the more firmer that you have the car, um, it gives you a better response, but the mid corner grip, it just seems to wash away a little bit more if you have it more firmer, so better points to your car so best basically better not better downforce but just better responsiveness or aerodynamics well yeah it is downforce actually going into the into the corners itself however it'll be more harder on curbs and it will definitely generate worse tire wear so i find seven eight eight probably maximum but you could probably if you really just want to focus on one lap pace really sweat out for the time trial for me, I do league races and online races, and I want my car to actually be stable as well. So seven is probably what I'd recommend, but all this 6.6 six would work well. So all the way to the right, firmer, it will just give you a better response. And for the rear, I don't really go higher than what I would do for the front suspension because I want a good balance between that. So normally I'd go like four, three. I wouldn't go too low because you want you don't want too much of a mixed balance between the two. Otherwise, you're just... 
it just it will just unsettle the car more. So you just want a relatively soft rear suspension, um, so it'll be nice over curbs and stuff. Um, good on, on good on rear tire wear as well, and good on traction. Um, so normally I go that seven or four or something like that. So that's what I recommend for that. As for the anti roll bar, it's a pretty similar thing as well. Um, you don't want to go too high um, because it would, it would give you a really good response. But again, it would just give you worse tire wear. And this is the balance, if you didn't know, for like 2013, 2012, 2011, if you played those games. This is what this is. So 11 will give you the best possible turn in, um, but the worst possible tire wear and the like, worst possible traction. Um, so normally I have it like similar to what I have on the front and rear suspensions so 7.5, 7, 7.4. Not really too different between the two, but definitely less on the rear because I want the rear to be more stable. Um, because in this game, it's really, really important to get good traction off this. So that is what I would do for that. As for the ride height, um, this one, the higher you have it, the better straight line speed that you're going to have. In real life, they try and run as low ride height as possible. Um, it's just beneficial. You're just going to have better aerodynamics. Um, so. You probably run a rear, like high ride height if you've got like high curves or maybe like Baku, Hungary, stuff like that. But for me, on this game, I run 5.5. Five. Anything lower just seems to really unsettle the car, just start way, way too much. Um, in real life, ideally, you, you try and run it as low as possible. But if I do it on this game, it gives me better straight line speed. Um, definitely, I noticed that. But through the corners, it just makes it... Too, almost too responsive but it just really really unsettles the car um quite a bit so i'd say four is a absolute lower so go but five five um just seems to be the sweet spot so a lower one would produce better aerodynamic ability um but it really starts to uh, unsettle the car as the car is actually bottoming out so what i mean by that is basically the car is actually tap touching your track which really actually starts to unsettle it so I keep these values on both the same 5.5 five, um, just to keep a really good balance between the two. And yeah, that's what I'll do for suspension and, and hopefully that has helped you. So we move on to the brakes now. And for this, I it's all personal preference to be honest. Um, people run completely different brakes um, than they would do without someone else. But for me, um, I wouldn't personally go higher than like 87 because I think the risk of locking up um, it is more well, so the higher you do it, and the more responsiveness is going to be when you're actually touching the pedal or the trigger. Um, if you're using the controller like me, it, it's just going to be really, really sensitive and just higher risk of lockups. But not only that, I find between like high speed corners or like maggots and beckets, um, through the fast left right at Ch uh, China or something like that, where you have to dab on the brake, um, not too much, but a little dab. If you have too much brake pressure, it's going to slow the car down too much and at the risk of locking up as well um so i normally run it on like sometimes on some tracks like i normally run at 82 to 84 max nothing higher than that and sometimes maybe even lower maybe it's silverstone i might even run 77 or something like that because there's not really too many hard braking points and you want that quick change of direction where a little bit of a dab on the brake it's not really going to do too much so you're not you're not going to, you, you know you're not going to lose that momentum through the corners so that is what i recommend for that and for the front brake bias more towards the rear if you have it more towards the rear it's going to be changing the direction of the car better um through high speed corners and a lot less chance of risk of lockups as well so if you run it more towards like this you would have it you slow the car down faster it'd be a lot more stable under braking as well so the back end wouldn't actually step out under braking but again you'd be more more risks actually like locking up the car itself so if you did this um you'd be you'd be stopping very quickly and the car wouldn't step out at all if you did this but it'd be it'd be too it'd be too stiff pretty much you wouldn't be able to move the car around where is if you did this so if you did 55 and probably like this 76 um the car would definitely not slow down as quick the back end may be at risk of slowing or stepping out depending how quickly you downshift um but you'd be able to actually move the car around a lot more um, through the corner and the risk of lockups will be um, significantly reduced as well so hopefully that has made sense in that but as i said any questions any thoughts then you can always just shoot me a message in the comments and i will try and actually answer the comments if you have any you know, any hardcore questions in there as for the tire pressures on this typically i normally keep this the same um, because it just gives me just the best balance between the two 
I find for me personally, when you go higher under pressures, it will give you, um, let's just see what it is. It will give you a very straight line, well, a bare straight line speed. Um, but I don't really, I don't really notice that too much for me. I may go a little bit lower on the rear, um, which I have been doing my set videos. That just gives you more contact patch with the track with a lower tire pressure. Because um, if you think about it, if you do a high tire pressure, you can just visualize it. It's kind of like the towing cab, but there'll be less contact surface um, with the track. So a softer one, so a more negative PSI, um, so a lower tire pressure, and that should generate actual better traction, but not actual straight line speed performance. So. I normally do this, so I normally just go a little bit lower on the rear. I don't really have it the same because I always want the rear, again, um, like with the suspension and stuff like that. I always want that to be just slightly better in stability so the car doesn't step out. Um, so that, that's what I would do with tire pressures. I normally go probably lowest to this. I wouldn't go any lower than that. Um, but normally in the middle is normally quite a good balance for this. As for the weight distribution on this, this is where it can actually get really different between the controller and the wheel as well. For me personally, in time trial, I think you can get away with running like a nine, eight or seven or six ballast. Um, if you're on the wheel, I think you can get away with running even higher. It also depends on how you actually set up the car with um, different areas of the setup. So basically, if you put it on six here and we went to the front wing and we put it on nine, six, that probably, well, Let's, let's do a better example. So if we went to this, basically the more you put it towards the rear, the quicker the car is actually going to rotate actually into the corner. So the quicker is actually going to be moving into the corner because more weight is actually being shifted in that direction, if that makes any sense at all. So basically the more you put it to the right in the most simple terms, the more less understeer you actually go to get. So the, the more pointier the car's going to be get, but the more you put it towards the rear, uh, more towards the right, the more oversteer, the more potential that the car is actually going to step out as well. However, if you put more more towards the front, so more towards the left, um, this is going to generate a lot of understeer. Um, this won't really work unless you're in the wet or you change something on the setup, which we'll be able to show in a minute. Um, it will really, really give you a lot of understeer. It will be really, really stable, um, but you'll just have a lot of understeer and you, you need some turning to get some lap time. So. I would say normally six is pretty good. For myself in time trial, um, whatever you run in time trial and it works for you, that's good. But in a race, I'd recommend maybe going down one or even two clicks because in a race, it's a little bit different because you're going lower speed, you're not carrying as much momentum and you don't want to really want to shred your tires by sliding out and you want the car as stable as possible um, to save the tires, to give you best traction. And it just gives you better consistency because you may be able to get away with it in like over one lap where you get the maximum performance but for that whole race you're just going to create too much tire wear and it's not even about the tire wear it's just about um actually um just being consistent and i think having a lower ballast enables you to attack it more be more consistent as well and apologies if you can hear the hoover in the background but hopefully you can't so what i would do with this so basically you could run a high ballast if you did this in the wings, so if you ran probably a little bit lower on the front wing, because if you do that, that will complement it nicely because you've got more stability on the car now on the rear wing. Whereas if you ran this and then you also run that, I personally, I think I'd spin out and we might even do an example in a minute, but I think you would actually spin out. So um, it wouldn't work too well. And you know what? We'll, we'll actually might do a demonstration of this. So let's leave it on 6.6. Six and let's put it on 11 ballast. And let's go out on the track quickly. And this isn't, I'm, I'm literally gonna do one corner here. Um, so give you a bit of an example, so. So coming out here, you can see how the car, no, it, it's sliding already. We'll try and do one turn, and then we'll go back to another setup. So let's try and do this. Yeah. Um, we're, we're just losing the car instantly. But if he went back into the SERP now, go to it, and we run a less on the ballast. So this will make it more understeer, more stable, but the potential lap time not, may not be as good because you can't point the car into corners as much, but it'll be a lot less sliding. And um, so if we put it on six now, 
and try this again if we go out on track. This will just make the car just a lot, a lot more stable. So we go through here. You can see a lot more stable um, than it was. So potentially that time. Let's try and do a good-ish corner going through here now. Let's see the car. So not a great corner because I'm kind of sitting so far away from but you get the idea, basically a lower balance will make it more stable, but more prone to understeer. Um, but the higher you go, it'd be a lot more oversteer, a lot harder to control when changing direction. And I think for wheel users, that's where they can control it because they could be so much smoother. It may be more beneficial for a wheel user to use that kind of setup. So they could use a lower aero or you know the same wings, but a higher ballast. Whereas a controller player really would need to actually use a lower ballast, but in a race, I think the lower bass is definitely going to be a lot better because time trial, those kind of steps while that pace may be really good for that potential, but it just won't be good overall for the consistency of a race. So that is my pretty detailed explanation of setups and hopefully it hasn't confused anyone as, as much as it did for me when I was first figuring this out for myself, but hopefully this gives you an idea of how to set up the car itself. As I said, um, those are the settings I've recommended for each component, but a stock setup is really, really good as a starting point, and you can just play around with things from there. So hopefully that's explained it for you. As always, if you've got any questions, then put it in the comment section below. But hopefully, if you have if you have found this video useful, please leave a like. Um, normally I don't ask for that, but if you did find it useful, please do that, because it'll actually show everyone else that it's, there's been something, well, some use out of this video. So. Thank you so much for watching. Any questions, as I said, put down below. Hope you're enjoying the game, and I will catch you next video. Cheers.